Picture this, it's a cozy evening, the soft glow of the television casting a warm ambience across the room. You settle into your favorite armchair, a bowl of popcorn at your side, and the anticipation in the air is palpable. The year is 1981, and a new TV series has just graced your screen, promising drama, intrigue, and a glimpse into the tantalizing world of wealth, power, and family secrets. This is your first encounter with Falcon Crest, a show that would etch indelible memories in the annals of television history. As you immersed yourself in the lives of the Channing and Gioberti families, you couldn't help but be captivated by the opulent vineyards of California's Tuscany Valley, the simmering rivalries, and the unforgettable characters that inhabited this lush landscape. Moments of scandal, betrayal, and unexpected alliances unfolded with each passing episode, leaving you on the edge of your seat, craving more. Perhaps it was the enigmatic Angela Channing, played by the incomparable Jane Wyman, who left an indelible mark on your memory with her commanding presence and cunning schemes. Or maybe it was the sweeping vistas of vineyards and rolling hills that transported you to a world of luxury and excess. Now, as we journey back to the world of Falcon Crest, let's uncover some random facts about the show that may surprise you and reignite your passion for this iconic series. So, sit back, relax, and prepare to delve into the secrets and stories that made Falcon Crest a beloved classic. In the fourth season of Falcon Crest, the show adopted a common practice in TV series by starting each episode with a recap of the previous events. This helped viewers refresh their memories before diving into the new episode. Following the recap, a brief sneak preview of the upcoming episode was shown, building anticipation before the main title sequence rolled in. This approach aimed to keep the audience engaged and invested in the ongoing storyline. By recapping past events and teasing what was to come, Falcon Crest ensured viewers stayed up to date with the dramatic twists and turns of the show. It was a simple yet effective technique to maintain viewer interest throughout the season. In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, Kim Novak portrayed a character named Kit Marlowe. Interestingly, Kit Marlowe's name held a connection to Hollywood history. It was suggested by Harry Cohn, the CEO of Columbia Studios, as a pseudonym for Novick when she was a young starlet. Novick added more layers of inside jokes when it came to naming Kit's various aliases. Kit's real name on the show was Susan Cameron, which also happened to be the name of Novick's agent during her time on set. Another alias Kit used was Madeline McKittrick. This name was a clever blend of the first name of one of Novick's characters in the iconic film Vertigo, and the McKittrick Hotel located on Eddy Street in San Francisco, where the character Maddie from Vertigo lived. These subtle nods to Kim Novick's career and the film industry added a unique touch to her character in Falcon Crest. The producers of Falcon Crest had originally planned to film Jane Wyman, who played a significant role in the series on the driveway in front of the mansion. The scene was meant to show her emerging from a limousine with another person's hand escorting her into the picture. However, in an unexpected twist, Wyman did not actually get out of the limo, making for an intriguing behind-the-scenes anecdote about the show. As an inside joke, the show reused police uniforms from the short-lived serial Flamingo Road, in which David Selby, a member of the Falcon Crest cast, had previously starred. Flamingo Road was set in a fictional town called Truro, Florida, and the reuse of the police uniforms added a fun connection between these two TV series. In Falcon Crest, these subtle details and inside jokes added depth and intrigue to the show, making it not only a compelling drama but also a nod to the world of entertainment in Hollywood history. In 1981, the TV series Falcon Crest underwent a significant transformation. Initially, it started with a format different from traditional soap operas, aiming to stand apart from the likes of Dallas. The creator, Earl Hamner, Jr made it clear that he didn't want Falcon Crest to become just another soap opera. However, by its second season, the show took a different path. By the second season, Falcon Crest became more serialized, ditching the self-contained episode format of the first season. This shift in storytelling made it resemble the soap opera style that Hamner had hoped to avoid. The show's evolution mirrored the trend of serialized storytelling that was gaining popularity in TV dramas during the early 80 seconds. Another notable aspect of Falcon Crest was the character Angela Channing, portrayed by Jane Wyman. While Angela might have seemed like a JR, 
Ewing-like character known for her tough business persona, Jane Wyman aimed to add depth to her role. She wanted Angela to be a representation of women in business who could balance their toughness with compassion and love. This added complexity made Angela a memorable character in the series. In the third season of Falcon Crest, there was a buzz about a potential guest appearance by none other than Richard Burton. Producers tried to lure him into a special guest role as Jean-Pierre Charbonne, one of Jacqueline Peralt's former husbands. Rumors circulated that Burton was offered a staggering $2.5 million for just a five-minute cameo. While the outcome of this negotiation remains uncertain, it generated significant interest and anticipation among fans. Falcon Crest's journey from a departure from soap opera conventions to embracing serialized storytelling, Jane Wyman's nuanced portrayal of Angela Channing, and the tantalizing possibility of Richard Burton's cameo all contributed to the show's intrigue and popularity in the early 80 seconds. In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, there's an interesting tidbit about the character Richard Channing. His middle name, Denault, is a tribute to his stepfather, Henry Denault. The character's name was chosen to honor Edward O. Denault, a former staff member of Lorimer. This subtle nod adds a personal touch to the show's character development. As for Marion McCargo Bell, who played the character Harriet Roberts, she was the real-life mother of William R. Moses. In 1980, Bell auditioned for the role of Maggie Gioberti, but was deemed too old for the part. Then, in 1984, she tried out for the role of Maggie's mother, Charlotte Pershing, but this time the producers thought she was too young. Her journey through auditions adds an intriguing layer to the show's casting history. Additionally, the writers had originally planned a storyline for season 7 involving Angela's long-lost daughter coming to Tuscany Valley to challenge Angela for control of the winery. Angie Dickinson was the desired actress for the role. However, when contract negotiations with Dickinson fell through, the story took a different turn. Richard Channing's character was reimagined as Angela's long-lost child, altering the course of the series. Falcon Crest was not only about drama and intrigue on screen, but also had its share of behind-the-scenes anecdotes that shaped the show's narrative. These insights offer a glimpse into the creative decisions and casting challenges faced by the production team. In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, a noteworthy behind-the-scenes plan didn't quite materialize. Originally, when Robert Foxworth, who portrayed Chase Gioberti, had no other choice but to star in his final year on the show, producers had a bold idea. They intended to take Chase Gioberti down a different path to send him to anger management classes and turn him into the show's most bitter and obnoxious villain. However, this intriguing twist never unfolded as envisioned. Instead, Robert Foxworth not only continued to portray Chase, but also took on a directorial role, helming some episodes of the series. In the realm of changes and controversies, season four of Falcon Crest saw the departure of Paul Freeman, who played Gustav Riedman. The reason behind this decision was a significant outcry from viewers. The character of Gustav Riedman was the head of an organization cartel, which was traced back to its roots in the dark history of Nazism. This storyline struck a sensitive chord with the audience, resulting in the removal of not only Gustav Riedman but also all characters connected to him. Lastly, the show faced a potential crisis when Jane Wyman, who portrayed Angela Channing, took a stand. Lorimer, the production company, sought to cut costs by shifting filming locations. They had purchased the original MGM lot in Culver City, California, but this move didn't sit well with Wyman. She threatened to quit because she wanted to continue filming at the CBS Studio Center in Studio City, California, where the series had been primarily produced. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dynamics and decisions that shaped Falcon Crest during its run. From unrealized character arcs to controversies and location disputes, the show navigated its share of challenges, all while captivating audiences with its dramatic storytelling. As we bid adieu to the world of Falcon Crest, we invite you to embark on a journey through the vineyards of nostalgia, where vintage drama and timeless characters have left an indelible mark on our hearts. The year 1981 marked the genesis of this iconic TV series, and since then, it has been a part of countless lives, weaving its intricate tales of power, passion, and betrayal. Now, take a moment to pause and reflect on your personal connection with Falcon Crest. 
Was it the mesmerizing allure of the California wine country that drew you in? Or perhaps the unforgettable performances of the show's ensemble cast? Maybe it's the gripping plot twists that kept you on the edge of your seat, episode after episode. Whatever it may be, we encourage you to share your favorite memories, cherished moments, or profound insights about Falcon Crest. In this digital age, where stories come and go at the speed of a click, Falcon Crest remains a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. It's a reminder that even in a world of constant change, some stories stand the test of time. Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane with us. Your thoughts and memories are the threads that keep the legacy of Falcon Crest alive reminding us that some stories are meant to be cherished forever. Share your reflections and stories, and let's keep the spirit of Falcon Crest alive in our hearts. After all, it's not just a TV series, it's a part of our lives. With warm regards and appreciation.